Guardians of Order released a lot of books in their time, and I mean a lot. Many of them were original works, but there was also quite a few adaptations of other works that they've done. Now, quantity doesn't necessarily mean quality, so we're going to take a look at some of their first edition and some of their second edition books that they've made for existing intellectual properties, and we're going to see which ones were good and which ones weren't so good. Let's get to it. I don't have a doubt in my mind that there was a paradigm shift in Guardians of Order when they transitioned from 1st edition of Big Eye Small Mouth to 2nd edition. 1st edition is where they were still finding their feet, and this is also the time they were still fumbling around as both a company and game designers. Looking through 1st edition books for Besom tells you this much. The 1st edition books were always prefaced with how much and what kind of effort went into the book, and in my opinion, it showed. The Sailor Moon RPG was the second book released by Guardians of Order. Based on the hit 1990s anime of the same name, Sans RPG, this was also where Guardians of Order first used the sub-attributes, kinda like the revised version of the Own a Big Mac attribute you find in Big Robot's cool starships. The version of sub-attributes that appeared in Sailor Moon isn't found in any other Besom book. It was designed specifically to emulate the magical powers that were seen in the first two seasons of the TV show. What I really liked about the Sailor Moon RPG was that it was written with both fans of RPGs and fans of Sailor Moon in mind, with the possibility that someone could be one, but not the other. And even if you're both, I imagine it's still a great book to have. It explains the concept of RPGs and why you might want to use the rules, and also reprints all the rules out of the first edition of Besom somebody might want to use. Not only that, but it includes numerous pre-made characters pulled straight from the show, both heroes and villains so a group could easily rewrite various parts of the show without having to reverse engineer their favorite characters. And if you're like me and only scarcely remember watching the show, this book doubles as a primer for the first two seasons of the original run on the show in North America. It has a summary, an in-depth episode guide, and a timeline of in-universe events. And all of that is useful regardless of if you're a fan or not of Sailor Moon. If you're a fan, you've got a tome filled with all kinds of trivia about the show right at your fingertips. If you're not a fan, but still want to play a game in that setting, you've got a bunch of canon information to help you get into the game better. It's even got a discussion about the Magical Girl anime genre, including a history of common themes in Magical Girl anime and manga. It's an RPG, as well as a fan guide to a popular show. Even if it is sort of dated, it's still amazing. I was also able to get my hands on the Tenchi Muyo RPG, and they gave it pretty much the same treatment. Essays about the anime-specific genre Tenchi belongs to, a guide to some of the series, detailed profiles of the characters, an explanation of the world setting, and even maps and floor plans of common places in the series. I'd wager that it had about the same amount of detail that the Sailor Moon RPG had, even if it has a smaller page count. It was also a shorter series when the book was released. Interestingly enough, though, this was the last book created by Guardians of Order before they printed their second edition of Big Eye Small Mouth. And in the Tenchi Muyo RPG, they said that was pretty much what 2nd edition of Besom was going to look like. However, that phrase didn't really account for the drastic change that was going to occur after 2nd edition was released. After Big Eye Small Mouth 2nd edition was released, Guardians of Order produced several more RPG sourcebooks for other popular anime. Most of these were presented as RPG sourcebooks for Big Eye Small Mouth, which was the case for Slayers and Revolutionary Girl Utena. However, there were a few such source books that were referred to as ultimate fan guides, but they were more or less in the same format as the Besom source books. Helsing was one that got this treatment. Unfortunately though, these books weren't as good as their first edition counterparts. For starters, the Tristat system rules weren't reprinted or reused in these games, so these books were no longer standalone. In order to make use of the content, you needed to already have the second edition core book. Granted, this was already done in some of the original settings, so I guess this is a minor gripe. The positive side of this change, though, is that it saved paper when it was printed, and it made the books easier to go through on their own. If we really needed to add new rules for a licensed universe, that's not a problem. Besom is nothing if not flexible. Adding new attributes or rearranging some of the rules to better reflect a particular show would be an equally viable solution. The problem, though, is that the new rules they added were pretty scarce, and they didn't really tell you too much about what rules you should use. 
The source book for Slayer's Try probably had the most new rules content of all the ones I've read so far, mostly in the form of a list of spells pre-written for the magic attribute. And all of them were based off spells that were actually used in the show. And that idea is great. I actually bought one of the Hero System source books specifically because it was a collection of spells you could use in a fantasy setting. However, in Slayers, this just kind of fell flat. It's not even 10 pages long, and the spells aren't even formatted all that well. They're just kind of a blob of text, and at first glance, you can't really tell where the rules for the spell begins and where they end and where the description starts. Other than that, everything else that's new is usually presented on just a page or two, which is also about how much new rules content you get in both Helsing and Utena. Now, I realize that the Tenchi Muyo RPG was pretty much the second edition of Besom before it was published, meaning that one also didn't really add too much. But that's fine, because even if you were to strip out the core rules, you'd still have a great deal of content, and it'd be a great thing to have if you were a fan of Tenchi Muyo. And if you're savvy, you've no doubt figured out what I'm gearing up towards. The licensed books for Big Eyes Small Mouth 2nd Edition don't have as much content in them. The earlier books had all kinds of resources, ranging from essays on the genre, other similar shows, overarching plot summaries, episode-by-episode -episode guides, and several more things. The newer books, though, all you get is an episode guide, a character guide, and not much else. I mean, I was ecstatic when I first found all the Slayers books, but that's mostly just because I'm a fan of Slayers. I really love that show. But when I compare something like the Sailor Moon RPG to one of the Slayers source books, it becomes pretty obvious just how much something like Slayers got shafted in 2nd edition. But don't take my word for it. Let me show you. This is the Sailor Moon role-playing game. And the book for it is, like, m it's much larger than all the other books that, we've, that I've shown so far when I was talking about Big Eye, Small Mouth. And this one's also the same page length. It's about 200 pages which is about how much you had in a lot of the other books, but it's just such a... It's it's much bigger. The other ones I could, like, cover most of them with, like, my hand, but you know what? No, I would need both hands, and I could barely cover it. No. This is a much bigger book. And on the back, you can see they still have, they still have that derpy-looking unicorn and someone riding on the back of it as their logo. I think this might have been the last time they used it. I don't know. But they finally decided to name the name like the generic mechanics of their system, and they even say right on the back what it is. It's a role playing game. It's a resource book. It's an art book. And you know what? This was also produced in a time when like this was produced before like the internet was widespread and was just full of information. So books were still very much how people got their information. It's how they got their pictures and whatnot. Whereas now, when someone gets a book, they'll usually tear it apart and scan each page individually, and it's just out there if someone really wants it. And they also added in some color pages of screenshots from, from the show, which is something that you know you would expect to have. But the rest of it is in black and white, but still uses artwork from the show. And... The page and the words are not that much smaller than in all the other, are not that much bigger or smaller, so it's 200 pages. The pages are bigger. You just all around get a lot more book with this one right here. Compared to this, it's a smaller page. It's a smaller page, and there's not, and there's. It's not as much book, because it's only like a hundred pages or so. And granted, most of it is in color, but the images are just so much smaller. Granted, they also give you more images, but they're still smaller. And I, I'm not really, I'm not really fond of that. I'd rather have like a big full-size image if I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna pay for a book. Like this is the biggest image in the book. And then right here they tell you, oh, if you want to use the game, here's what you need to look for. So, I mean, I guess it's okay. They at, least, they at least show you a cover of what you're looking for. Whereas on, like, World of Darkness, they just say, for use with the World of Darkness core rulebook. They don't even show you what you're looking for here. Boom, you know what you're looking for. So, 
I mean, I guess they did a few things right. But the text is roughly the same size in this book as it is in this book. So, you're, you're actually getting like a fourth of the book if you were to get this, one of the second edition books, versus this. This is like a fourth of the book. And the price set tag, it's about $30 Canadian, 20 US, compared to, well, $25, $25 US, 35 Canadian. That's about, I think the current exchange rate is, for my, for my European viewers, that's close to about like, I don't know, I think like maybe 18 and... 18 and 15 euros, maybe? I don't know. I, I don't exactly keep up too much with exchange rates of currency, but the fact of the matter is, for just a few do for just a few dollars less, for just like a few dollars Canadian or US, or a few euros less, you're getting only, you're getting dramatically less book, you're getting dramatically less content. I mean, even though it's all color, I would actually... I would actually be just fine with black and white if it gave me more content, which you don't get with this. I have three different books that are all like this, and I mean, I didn't realize that this is what I could have been getting, even though I'm just not a fan of this show, but so yeah, that's, that's another thing. You're just not getting as great of books in the second edition. So there we have it. Big Eye Small Mouth, a game dedicated to anime, used to run games that are based on anime. Some of them were great, and most of those were the first edition ones. Second edition ones, not quite as great. Kind of like with their original settings. Now, does that mean that we've covered everything that there is with Besom? No. Have we covered everything with Guardians of Order? Not by a long shot. There was actually a lot of stuff that Guardians of Order did, including a superheroes game, which generally seemed to be more well-received than Big Eye Small Mouth. But there is still some uh, content of Big Eye Small Mouth I can talk about. We can talk about this monstrosity next time! Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give me one of those thumbs up I love oh so very much. Comments are fine too, even if they aren't very nice. If you're getting sick of all this big eyes, small mouth talk, don't worry, we're in the final stretch. Next one is probably gonna be the last one. Maybe. So, with all that said, I am Eron Dershedel, and I will see you all next time.